Holy Spirit, we worship you. We honor you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Concentrate on the Lord throughout this meeting. Forget about who is sitting close to you. Set your mind on the Lord. Do you understand? Let me show you something in the Bible. Before we, we get into our message Book of Isaiah Isaiah chapter 26 <clears throat> Oh hallelujah Have you found it? Isaiah chapter 26 I want you all to read Verse 3 Again <clears throat> It says Thou wilt keep him He's talking about God He's telling us what God will do. He says, Thou would keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed, stationed on thee. Isaiah the prophet is letting us know that God will keep that one King James says, perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on him. Whose mind is focused on him. In other words, if you focus your mind on the Lord, he will keep you in perfect peace. Now, what is perfect peace here? <clears throat> the King James doesn't give us the best picture of it. The Hebrew... Construction there doesn't say that will keep him in perfect peace. He actually says shalom shalom Literally meaning that would keep him in peace peace Now what does that mean? 
He means peace of prosperity. Peace with prosperity. Peace in prosperity. Because shalom is not just quietness. Shalom means peace with rest. Rest of mind. Rest. He's talking about the rest of the man who has arrived. Meaning that there's no more struggling in his life. He has arrived. So he says God will keep that man in shalom, shalom. Perfect peace, King James says. No more struggling. His troubles have been overcome. He has gained the mastery over his circumstances. He has taken charge. Rest has come because he has arrived in the place of rest. That's what Jesus was saying when he said, Take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, And you shall have rest for your souls. Hallelujah. That's what he meant. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor, all ye that struggle and are heavy burdened. He says, Now I will give you rest. He says, If you've been struggling, if you've been trying to do it, if you've been trying and trying, he says, Look, stop, come to me. Ye that are heavy burdened. He says, I'll give you rest. That's the kind of rest that you have in Shalom. No more struggling. Hallelujah. So, today, try to receive blessings from that verse. Stay your mind on him. Refuse to be distracted. Refuse to let your mind wander around. Focus your heart, your mind on the Lord. And you know what? By the time you're living here, you will know that you have arrived. <laughs> you're going to be shouting, I got it! I got it! Woo! Hallelujah! I imagine some of you going home and when you get home you say guess what I got it <laughs> hallelujah I want to begin reading today from book of Romans chapter number 8 you won't live here like you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, tormented, seek or lay. For the Spirit of the Lord is still the same. You won't be here like you came in Jesus' name. I'm reading to you from verse 14 for as many as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God 
As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. There, he's not just talking about people that are born of God. He means those that have been raised by God. They have been placed in the position of authority. They've been raised by God. The Greek word there is heroes. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the heroes of God. You know that not everyone who's born again is led by the Spirit of God. You know, a lot of people quote this verse and say, Whatever I do, I'm led by the Spirit. No, you have to be raised in the things of God. You have to grow in the things of God to become a man in the realm of the Spirit, not a child. So he says, they are the heroes of God. It means the adopted sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit, verse 15, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again of ye, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. I'll explain that word in a moment. This is the spirit of adoption. That's what he's talking about. The Greek word is heothesia. Meaning a placing as a son. Though you were born, born of him, you have now been trained, reigned, uh, you've been trained and raised to that level where you can handle authority, where you're no longer a child in spiritual things. I'll show you the significance of this in a moment. Verse 16. He says, the Spirit himself beareth witness. Old King James translation uses the word itself. Should, it should be himself. <clears throat> the Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The word for children of God, the children, is technon. Meaning that we are the sons of God. We are the children of God. We are born of God. That's what it means. We are his reproduction. Hallelujah. We are his seed. We are his reproduction. He says the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. That we are the children of God. The technon of God. And if technon. Have you seen that? If technon. Then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If we are the children of God. Born of God. Notice he didn't say if we are the heroes. But if we are the technon. So if we are born of him, we are heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him. That we may be also glorified together. Have you seen that? Now let me just explain this verse 17 with another verse. Turn to the book of Galatians. Galatians. Chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, a slave, though he be master of all, though he be lord of all. I want you to notice that. Now in the book of Romans chapter 8, a moment ago, we read in the 16th verse, something very interesting. He said, if we are children of God, then we are heirs. And I said, the Greek word there is technon, meaning that we are born of God. Alright? So, he says, we are heirs, and therefore joint heirs with Christ. Every one of us that's born of the Spirit of God, everyone that's born again is an heir of God. Which means you have an inheritance. He says, you are a joint heir with Christ. That means, whatever belongs to Jesus Christ belongs to you as well. But then in Galatians chapter 4, he says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, the Greek word there is nepios, meaning a child that, that is yet growing, a baby, a child that, is not, that, that doesn't know how to talk right yet. He says nepios. These three Greek words I want you to understand. One is technon. He's talking about the one that's born of God. He's talking about one that's been reproduced. In terms of birth. He's born again. 
Then he, this one here, he says, Nepius, a child in understanding, a child in communication, a child in maturity. That's what he's talking about. He says, the heir, though you are born of God and you are an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ, as long as you are a Nepius, as long as you are a child in understanding, as long as you are a child spiritually, as long as you are a child in the things of God, he says, you are not different from a slave. Look at it there. He says, not different. King James uses the word servant. It means a slave. Though he be Lord of all. Now you can understand why you may be going through certain kind of things that you're, that you're suffering right now. And you're saying, but I'm a child of God. Why is this happening to me? Because you are a Nepios. He says, even though you are an heir of God. Even though all things belong to you, as long as you are in the pews. He didn't say when you are. He says as long as you are. Which means he's not just talking about a certain period. It is up to you. That's why you have certain people who are 25 years old and they are still acting like children. The mother of a 17 year old boy says, oh please leave my son, he's a child. At 17 you are a child. You are in the pews. And if after you've been born again for two years, you haven't started growing in the things of God, you are in appeals. And the Bible says, though all things belong to you, you, your life will not be different from the life of a slave in the realm of the spirit. Demon spirits will handle you anyhow and any time. They'll walk on you. The circumstances of life will dominate and paralyze you. You live a frustrated life. That's what he's saying. He says your life is no different from a servant. A slave, that means. So he says, what God does for you is to place you under tutors and governors. That means people to take care of you, to train you and raise you in the things of God. So you can grow right. Are you still there? All right, now come in here. Verse... Two, but it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. He says, until the time appointed of the Father, not the time appointed by Himself. You know, some people say, ah, I'm no longer a child in the things of God. I want to go and start my church. That's what has happened to many churches. They are pastored by Nepios. Yeah, and I don't mean that insultively. I'm just letting you understand what is happening to many people. The Bible says, until the time appointed of the Father, not the time appointed by the man Himself or the Son Himself. Have you seen it? Okay. Now come here. He says in verse 3. Even so we, when we were Nepios. The Greek word there again for children is Nepios. says when we were Nepios, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. Oh my goodness. He says when we were children. When we were Nepios. He says we were in bondage. We were afraid of the dreams we had. If we dreamt of somebody pursuing us in the night, we were scared. He says, when we were in the pills, we were in bondage. Under the elements of the world. Think about it. We suffered fever, malaria, typhoid. Headaches, colds, cough. We went through all these kind of problems. When there was a flu in town, we suffered it. He says, even so we, when we were in appeals, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. Why are you not going to work today? I'm cold. What is making you cold? appeals. <laughs> 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 He's a joint heir with Christ. What is his problem? The Bible says, as long as he is in the pews, as long it is up to you, as long as you are in the pews, he says you are in bondage to the elements of the world. And I want you to mark that elements of the world, elements of the world. He's talking about the forces of this world. Where is cancer from? Where's diabetes from? The 
These are all things that we contract in the world. They have become natural to men. Let me explain something to you. I, I think I should share it with you. You see, we are engaged in three worlds. Are you still there? I said we are engaged in three worlds. And we need to understand. Let's finish reading this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we go back to what? Romans, okay? You know, we just took a trip to Galatians. We're back to Romans. Are you there? Verse 17. And if children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we serve a wisdom, that we may be also glorified together. Verse 18. For I reckon, oh I like this, this is nice. It says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. Amen. For, uh-huh, uh-huh, verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the heroes of God. I want you to understand this. He says the earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation. Not of the technon of God, but of the heroes of God. The matured sons of God. The sons of God that have come to their place. Are you getting it? He says the creation is waiting in pain, traveling in pain, waiting for the manifestation, the outshining of the sons of God, the heroes of God, the adopted sons of God. Look, let's read it. Verse 20, for the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travailed in pain together until now. Think about it. Let me show you God's purpose. Turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. God's purpose. His plan. Are you there? I'm reading from verse 3. Ephesians chapter number 1 from verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Who hath blessed us. He's not about to bless us. He's already done it. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Look at verse 5. That's what I want you to see. Having predestinated us unto the heothesia. Predestinated us unto the adoption of sons. That's what he's talking about. In other words, God's plan. That, that, that should give you the, the idea. You say, why? The, the, the way God has written about us. He's written about us in the New Testament as though there are no problems at all. Why? Because the Bible says he predestinated us. Unto what? The adoption of children. The King James gives you children but it is heothesia meaning the adoption of sons he predestinated us unto sonship matured sons of God in other words God's looking at us as matured sons of God no, no parent gives birth to a child hoping and looking forward to the child remaining the child in the pews Come on. No, you're looking forward. You're training the child. Looking forward to the 
grown man, no grown woman, then they can handle responsibility. You understand what I'm talking about? But as long as they are children, children are not responsible. God doesn't want irresponsible, non-responsible Mepios. He's raising responsible children. So we become heroes, adopted sons. Then he says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the heroes of God. You see, the heroes of God don't know anything like fear. Oh, you've got to understand what I'm talking about. When you grow to become the heroes of God, sickness is no longer a challenge. <laughs> Yeah. That's why he said, Is any sick among you? He said, Let him call for the elders of the church. He's not talking about the gray headed members of the church. He's talking about the heroes of God. He says, The elders, those who have used the word of God, those who have come to understand the word of God, those who see. Ah, yeah, yeah. Galatians, Galatians chapter 1. Ah, ha, 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 ha. He says the creation, the earnest expectation of the creation waits for the manifestation of the hues of God. Oh, he says the whole creation is groaning in pain, traveling in pain. Waiting for the manifestation. Study the book of James. He says money, money, money is crying. Asking for deliverance. That's what the Bible says. Why? Because money has been used to do all the wrong things. So the Bible says money is going to shout against those who misused it. Which means even money is crying to be liberated. When money is in the hand of a bad guy. The money is going somewhere to do something wrong. The money is crying but it's under control. But the money in the hand of a child of God is for the salvation of souls. Can you shout him in somebody? No, look at this. No, look at this. Look at this. No, look at this place. Where people hear the word of God and are blessed. Imagine if this money was not in our hands and it was in the hands of some fellow out there who used to build a large casino. And then anybody can they come there boozing and smoking and all that kind. And, 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 and then a lot of people lose their lives and become nonanities in the world. But when it's in the hand of God's people, The money produces books and tapes talking about Jesus all over the world. Hallelujah. The innocent expectation of the creation. These plants here, they are the happiest in the world. I'm telling you. But if an appeals is taking care of them, there's a problem. The Bible says... Even the animals of a wicked man, they suffer. His pets suffer. You may be feeding them, feeding them and they're looking, grooming them like that, but they are not happy. You know why? Because all they see is not all there is. They watch angels not come into your house. They watch demons walking into the house. Sometimes the dog is backing, you think he's backing because there's something else. No, he's seen a devil. <laughs> he's unhappy. But you are grooming it. The endless expectation of the creation waits for the manifestation, the showing up of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Oh yeah. Galatians chapter 1. I want us to read something. Are you there? We are reading 
Verse 4. Let's read it from verse 3 so we can get it in the right context. It says, Grace be to you, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. I said we are engaged in three different worlds. The first one is this present evil world. This present evil world. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ gave himself for our sins. Saving us from our sins. That he might deliver us from this present evil world. So that this present evil world will have no power over us. Why does he call it this present evil world? There's a reason. This world has been, is dominated from another world. It's been taken over from another world. Second Corinthians. Chapter 4. Have you seen it? Verse 4. Uh, let's read from verse 3. But if our gospel be heed, it is heed to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, the God of this world, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ through the image of God should shine unto them. He says, The God of this world hath blinded their minds. Who is the God of this world? Satan. Satan is the God of this world. The Greek word is aeon. This world. Aeon. Meaning this age. With the system of this world. Satan is the head. He used to be the prince of the cosmos. But he was cast out. Jesus is now is the prince of this cosmos cast out. But he set up a system and is ruling them from outer space. In Galatians chapter 1, where we're reading verse 4, he said, Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from, the, from this present evil world. Evil, Greek word is poneros. It means wicked, full of labors, annoyances, hardships, harassments, toils, perils, pains, trouble. That's what it means, evil. Things that make you unhappy all the time. Fruitless labors. He called it this present evil world. This is a world in which men live. Every day. No wonder the Bible says they are without God in the world. Walking around without God. What a life. Walking around without God. Hedonistic. What a life. To have no light. This world is full of pain. Full of frustrations. Many times men are asking, Why was I born? Why did I ever come? What am I doing here? Some even curse. Their parents were ever giving birth to them. So I didn't tell anybody I wanted to come. Why did they bring me here? This world. Tell somebody this world. This present evil world. And we live in this world. We live here. Because this world has been set over the cosmos in which we have found ourselves. It 
So it's not always this way. But you know the story how it turned out this way. How Satan became the God of this world. Then, there's another word. I want you to turn to the book of Visions, chapter number 6. Visions, chapter 6. I'm reading to you from verse 10. Are you there? Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wires of the devil. Look at it. That's important. He says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wires of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He says, we are not wrestling against mother-in-law and father-in-law and brothers and sisters and our friends and neighbors. We are not wrestling against our co-workers. He says, the trouble you are having is not coming from those people that you see. He says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Huh. I want you to think about that. The rulers of the darkness of this world. In this world, there is another dark world. It's called the kingdom of darkness. And the Bible talks about the rulers of the darkness of this world. So this present evil world has a kingdom of darkness that's dominating it. He says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. The fourth one he says against spiritual wickedness. Wickedness. Ah! He says spiritual wickedness in the heavenly realms. King James says in high places. In the heavenly realms. That means those ones don't function here. They function in the heavenlies. Above the earth. They are the highest. They are the highest level. Of demoniacal forces. And they are the ones who give instructions to the rulers of the darkness of this world. And the rulers of the darkness of this world are the ones that ruin men's lives. They make human beings do what they don't want to do. They are the ones frustrating governments in the world. These are the rulers of the darkness of this world. Functioning on behalf of those spiritual wickedness. The Bible says wicked spirits in the heavenly realms. That's a lighter way of putting it. King James gets, the, gets it the best. When he calls them spiritual wickedness. In other words, it is consistent with their nature. It is the very nature of wickedness. So they are not just wicked spirits. They are wickedness. It's very important. Listen, because Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He didn't say, I'm a God of light. He said, I'm the light. Then he said, ye are the light. God, the Bible says, is love. Not a God of love. He's not a God of love. He's not a love God. He is love. It is his nature. But these spirits are wicked. So they're not just wicked spirits. King James says spiritual wickedness in the heavenly realms. High places, he says. So he says, wherefore I say unto you, take unto you what? He says, the whole armor of God. 
not some. He says, put on therefore. Because we are engaged in a warfare. So whether they are in the earth or in the heavenlies, their focus is us. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. How can a child that had no problem at all suddenly be afflicted with tuberculosis? Or asthma. Where did it come from? These are spiritual forces. That run men's lives. It's a kingdom of darkness. Then. A man came. He. 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 Oh boy, he was God's intrusion into the sense realm. Jesus of Nazareth. He was born into this present evil world. He came into this present evil world. But he was not of this world. He came in here to live among us. Oh, the Bible says he was in the world. The world was made by him. The world knew him not. He came unto his own. His own received him not. But he had something to give. <laughs> he had something to give. To men and women that have been dominated by satanic forces. He had something to give. Oh, look at him walking the streets. Jesus of Nazareth. They didn't know who he was. But he was more than a man. He was himself God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. Meaning he had a kingdom. That's what he said to Pilate. He said, My kingdom is not of this world. He didn't say, I don't have a kingdom. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. St. John's Gospel, chapter 15. Have you seen it? Can you read verse 19 to me? Hello? Who's reading? Did I tell you what? Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, let me read it out. Some people don't know where it is. They're still looking for it. If you were of the world, some are telling me that there's no verse 19. <laughs> Have you found it now? Okay, read it together. One to go. chosen you out of the world therefore the world hated you he says if you were of the world the world would love its own he says but because you are not of the world and I have chosen you out of the world we don't belong here we are not of this world Understand this. Every nation, every nation is governed by the rulers of the darkness of this world. By spiritual wickedness in high places. I'll show that to you in a moment from the Bible. Only Israel, only Israel was the nation chosen by God 
that Satan had no legal claims over. Why? Because they had a system. Oh. Their system was not set up by fallen men. Are you following this now? Their system was set up by God. He gave them laws. Righteous laws to live by. Satan had no claims over them. They lived by a different set of laws. All other nations sat down to decide. We do this or we don't do that. We want this, we don't want that. Human beings, fallen men with fallen laws. Only Israel had a law given to them by God. Oh, I like it. Turn to the book of Psalms. Let me show you something. I love it. I love it. I love it. Psalm 33. Oh, oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, 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 oh. Is something turning inside you? Psalm 33. I want you all to read verse 12. Want to go. Hallelujah. He says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And the people whom he had chosen for his inheritance. I want you to notice this. You know a lot of people say, Well, our country belongs to God. And uh, you know, the, America belongs to God. Uh, 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 France, I don't know, all of them. They say they belong to God. The Bible doesn't say, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed as the people who have chosen the Lord. He says, whom the Lord has chosen for his inheritance. It's God doing the choosing. It's not man saying we have chosen him. It's whom the Lord had chosen. And he said he chose Israel. And he gave them his laws. Democracy is not... Is not... God's method. I'm not against democracy. The truth is, almost no nation, in fact, I don't know any nation in the world that's a democracy. That's a fact. A big fact. You say, what about the U.S.? The U.S. is not a democracy. It's a republic. And there's a difference between the two. I always wonder why the world has such contradictions. That's the reason why they have two parties, two major parties, the Democrats and the Republicans. It's the ideology. Democracy is, the substance of democracy is, we rule by ourselves according to the laws that we have made in our rulers are those that we have chosen and there are no absolutes whatever we say is right is right and when we change our minds to say it is now wrong it becomes wrong and when we change our minds again to say that which we have said was wrong is now right it becomes right that is democracy in a republic you have absolutes There are things, whether the people agree or not, that are wrong. They have accepted certain things to be right or wrong. And those things will not change. For example, murder will never be right in a republic. It could become right in a democracy. If one day they say survival of the fittest, and they can pass it into law, that's democracy. So we have, in reality, uh, democratic republicans. (laughs) 
I think that's why the guy in Congo called his nation the Democratic Republic of Congo. <laughs> he had to have them all together. So we say here, you're practicing what? Uh, democracy in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> so I, I think that they are trying to reorganize their minds about the whole stuff. Yeah. But that's what it's all about really. But God gave the children of Israel His own laws. He gave them laws. You know the story? Many, 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 many years later, they rejected Him and rejected His laws and kicked Him out of the temple and said, we don't want you. We want to be like other nations. Have you ever felt tired of being in church on Sunday mornings? You just want to find out what some other guys are enjoying on Sunday when everywhere is quiet. You want to find out on Sunday at home what they show on TV when all honest men have gone to church. <laughs> and you hold your remote control. You deceived everybody that you were sick. You aren't going to church today. Soon as they were all gone, you came to the sitting room and started scrolling the TV. You watched everything they had to show. Shame on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, all other nations had their own laws dominated by Satan. Let me show you something. The book of Daniel. God is raising up sons. He's raising up his children. To take over the world. To walk in authority. To walk in power. Do you understand what I'm talking about? God wants to use you. When you tell somebody, God bless you. Listen, that, sing, that little statement, heaven responds to it. But you see, but the Nepios have made that word of non effect. Jesus said the Jews made the word of God of non effect. When you are a Nepios, God bless you doesn't mean anything to you. You say, oh, amen, amen. But you see, God has, a, he has his own kingdom. We'll talk about that in a moment. There's a way that he has designed. This, this thing seems simple. They're so simple. Sometimes the super intelligentsia don't accept it. Let's go. Are you ready? Where are you going? Book of Daniel. Thank you. Daniel chapter number... Ten. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Hiya, hiya, hiya. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Let me give you the background. Daniel was praying. On this occasion, the Bible says he was fasting because of his people. He was fasting and praying. And he prayed and fasted for 21 days. That is three weeks. Is that correct? Let me read it to you from verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, king of Persia that was the empire of the day Persia a thing was revealed unto Daniel whose name was called Bethesazar and the thing was true but the time appointed was long and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision in those days I Daniel was mourning three full weeks I 
ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh, nor wine, that's meat, nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Are you there? Okay, let's see what happened. He says, At the end of those three weeks, something happened to me, he says. I want you to go to verse 10. He was on his knees, praying. He says, And behold, an hand touched me, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees, and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, An angel came to him, an angel. An angel came to Daniel. Verse 11. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved. Oh. Even the angels knew that God loved Daniel. Does God love Daniel more than he loves us? I don't think so. Are you still there? Because you see, if at all there was a difference, I think he loves us more. Because you see, why didn't Jesus come in Daniel's day? It was long after Daniel come and gone. Or he came ahead of me. And I'm a joint heir with him. Hallelujah. So don't get jealous of Daniel because the Bible says a man greatly beloved. Listen, you are greatly beloved. But I want us to see something nice here. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. God has sent me unto you, he says. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come because of thy words. Look, Daniel was fasting for 21 days. But the angel says, the very first day that you began to pray he says God heard your prayer and I was sent because of your words this is absolutely remarkable this is not the first time this is happening turn to chapter 9 let me show you something it's just wonderful Now, if you would look at just a moment, verse 23. Let me read it from verse 22, all right? And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth. I was commanded and I am come to show thee for thou art greatly beloved therefore understand the matter and consider the vision listen an angel had come to him before in chapter 9 he said from the very beginning when you began to pray the commandment came forth I was dispatched as soon as you started praying I was sent he says because you are greatly beloved look at the reason he said because you are greatly beloved God loves you so much so now we come to chapter 10 the angel is saying look it's not the 21 days that you fasted that's making me come I was sent the very first day day one when you started praying he said the word came go to Daniel he is in Persia go to him and give him this revelation and the angel went out of heaven 
headed for Persia. Okay? If God heard the first day, and that very first day, He sent the angel, what in the world happened? 21 days? Look at it. Verse 12 again. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince, aha, I want you to notice, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for one and twenty days. That's twenty-one days. He says, I was attacked. He says, 21 days ago, God sent me from heaven. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, this was a spiritual being, not a human being. And he was called the prince. That means, the, the, the Greek word means ruler. The ruler of the kingdom of Persia. So Satan has divided the world. And appointed his own angels. His angelic beings all over the world. He has those who rule over nations. He has those who rule over states. He has those who rule over little cities and towns and villages. He has those who rule over families and individuals. There are more demons, more fallen angels than human beings in the world for you to understand that they outnumber human beings so he has more than enough to distribute to all over the world so he set one over Persia that was the one that determined what happened in Persia and so when God sent an angel to Daniel who was in Persia the prince, the ruler of the kingdom, the dark kingdom of Persia, withstood the angel. He attacked him. Imagine, 21 days. He held him up for 21 days. Daniel was praying. Oh God, why are you not hearing me? God heard. God dispatched an angel. Listen, the spirit world. You know, some people think that God just does whatever He wants to do. When He just wakes up and says, Hey, I don't like this thing. Kish. You know, they just think God does whatever He likes. God is not like that. He's very organized. Why didn't He get into the fight too? No, because there are laws. There are laws in the realm of the spirit. The prince of Persia withstood the angel. He fought against the angel. The angel was fighting. He was there. 21 days passed by. Let's see what happened. Verse 13 again. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, Michael is one of the chief princes. So there are other chief princes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Michael is the one that God set over Israel. He is the, he is the prince, the ruler of Israel. You can read about him in the book of Revelation. It's wonderful. Let's talk about this. You still there? He says, but, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. He said, I was arrested. I was arrested. No, read it in better English. He says, I was arrested for 21 days by the ruler of Persia. An angel. <laughs> He was arrested by those wicked spirits in the heavenlies. This particular devil was in the heavenlies. And he arrested the angel of God. I wonder how many other angels were with him. They arrested him. Kept in the 21 days until Michael came. 
and Michael scattered everywhere. Ah, bah, bah. Hey! Now you can understand why sometimes God tells you not to go somewhere. Not because He can't deliver you. But because your level of faith has not warranted a higher level of angel. Because the angel that is with you could be arrested. You see, there are different levels. There are different levels. So in verse 14 it says, Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. Praise the Lord. Now let's go straight to verse 19. The angel is still speaking. And said, O man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee. Be strong, yea be strong. Hallelujah. The angel is ministering to Daniel. He's ministering to Daniel. He says, Be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened. Sombakaya. The angel said, Be strong. He said it. He didn't put something inside Daniel. He said it. He ministered to him by words. And Daniel said, And I was strengthened. And I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. See, because on my way out of here, I still have to engage the prince of Persia in a fight. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grisha shall come. And you know, after that, Greece came in. Because when he overcame the prince of Persia, Satan had to change him. Because he was beaten, he was overcome. They wouldn't pound him and leave him there. Look, look, what? listen, listen, Michael was there. We'll see that in a moment. So when this angel went back, he and Michael engaged the prince of Persia in that fight. He said, and when I am gone, the prince of Grisha shall come. He's given a revelation of another kingdom that will come after Persia. And that's what happened. Well, let's read. Verse 21. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things. But Michael your prince. Another version says the prince of Israel. Praise God. Amen. What am I showing you? The dark world. With which. We. Or against which we have to fight. The dark world. There's a dark world, a world of darkness. It is here now. This evil world is here now. The world of darkness is right here. Sometimes you find yourself with a very sharp pain. Nothing was wrong before then. Everything was all right. And suddenly, ah! Hey! 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 You, you can't bend. You can't. You, hey, hey. you know, you're looking for where to sit down. Hey! And they may carry you like that. Hey! You know? From one trouble to another. It's worse. It's worse. It's worse. You thought it was a little thing. It's two weeks now. Ah, it's one year now. Since then, you've been walking like this. <laughs> what happened? Once upon a time. Fiery darts of the wicked. <laughs> the 
just like that for some others you woke up and you saw something you looked since that day you've not been able to see again since that day is one eye you've been using because somebody told you to look at something you looked <laughs> you know it sounds funny now but the, the, this is the reality it's where people live somebody went to the office he was the boss everything was all right until that day he sat on his desk and ah! they had to carry him from there to the hospital and he never returned why because someone else wanted his job and that person are consulted with spiritual forces of darkness rulers of the darkness of this world and they concocted something for him and threw that missile and when he came to work hope they hooked him and from there they carried him away and someone else took his job some things like that have happened to Christians why because they are Nepios. He said, when we were Nepios, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But as many as are led by the Spirit of God, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, as many as are led. Oh, hallelujah! Those who are led, they come into the office. Hey! Phronesis! 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 Ayaya! For some reason, he is not sitting on the chair. For some reason, he starts talking in tongues. Glory to God! Hallelujah! Then the anointing is stared. The anointing is stared. When he sits on the chair, what was there bounces off. Ah! Then you hear a native doctor died somewhere. You didn't do anything. But when you stared the anointing, and sat down on that chair that evil that was sent against you somebody shout hallelujah glory to God what is God waiting for he says the earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God, the hewers of God, who understand spiritual things. Hallelujah! Something has happened in the realm of the spirit. Daniel could not engage spiritual forces of darkness. He could not. Because they dominated the world in which he lived. And the law of his nation was broken. And Jehovah had gone out of the temple. Oh. He no longer could go to the temple of God. He no longer could offer those sacrifices. He no longer could go and have the ministry of the priesthood. Receive that ministry of a blessing that God had promised them. He no longer had it. Now living in the permissive will of God as a nation. Driven out of their inheritance. But you see the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1. From verse 12 it says, Giving thanks unto the Father. 
who hath made us meet who hath qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of lights there is another kingdom it is called the kingdom of lights he says who hath delivered us from the domain the authority from the kingdom the dominion of darkness and translated transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood we have been transferred taken out of the domain hallelujah hallelujah taken out we don't belong there anymore we were transferred translated from the dominion of darkness from the rulership of darkness oh hallelujah transferred into the kingdom of god's dear son jesus is our ruler jesus is our prince can you shout amen somebody he is our, our ruler now oh hallelujah let me tell you something even though we have angels who move around us the church is not given an angel like you have michael the prince of israel jesus christ head of the church ruler of the church when he was leaving the world he said i pray the father and he shall give you another comforter Said he shall abide with you forever even the spirit of truth the spirit of reality oh 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 the spirit of reality whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not oh in this world this present evil world they walk according to their senses they know that cancer is there because they can feel it they know it is there because they can see it they know it is there because they have studied in the school and the school has told them the definition of cancer so they know it but there is a spirit of reality you read just now what the angel says that that which is noted in the scripture of truth hallelujah what a term what a term and now the bible says if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have communication communication we have fellowship koinonia a togetherness are you understanding what i'm talking about there is a flow are you understanding this we have fellowship one with another in the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from our sin if we walk in the light he has given us his light we are in the kingdom of light even though we are in the world we are not of the world are you hearing me we have our own laws we use our own lights they take that guy to the doctor the doctor says you gotta have an x-ray well over here we have the word ray are you hearing what i'm saying come on somebody we use the word of god to look inside and then as we are trained by the holy spirit oh this is the most beautiful thing in the whole world the thoughts the truth the revelation of the holy spirit the one who teaches us the word of god the one who takes the words and makes it substance in us are you hearing what i'm saying the one that helps us such that when we are studying the scriptures it doesn't just go into our brain we don't reason out the scripture the holy spirit of god helps us receive the word right into our spirit so that we become one with the word no wonder paul coined a new word he called it epignosis do you understand he's talking about a knowledge of the word of god he's talking about that kind of knowledge where you are not just knowing it you are knowing it like this no he says you are experiencing the knowledge you are walking in the light of the knowledge oh hallelujah god wants to use you are you hearing me god wants to use you but he can't use you while you're suffering with cancer 
He can't use you while you're walking in fear. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Those limitations will not help. God wants to use you. He wants to do great things in your life. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Are you still here? Hold on for a moment. Listen. The Bible says, Saviors shall come from Mount Zion. Redeemers shall come from Mount Zion. Are you hearing? He's talking about us. We are the ones who liberate the world. The world is waiting to be set free. The world is waiting to be let free. Let loose. The world is waiting to be delivered from bondage. And we are the ones. Oh, hallelujah. The gospel in your mouth is the power of God. It is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes. That's what the Bible says. It says, for in that gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Today, we are the ones that the Father has been waiting for. Yes, we are growing. We are learning. We are maturing. Something is happening. Something is happening in our spirits. Some of you have had sickness oppressing your body. But in your spirits, you are receiving the word of God. Strength is coming into you. And it is breaking the sickness down. It is breaking the disease down. It is breaking down the infirmity. Oh, hallelujah. Something is happening. That tumor in your body cannot stay. That cancer cannot stay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That growth cannot stay in your body. The diabetes cannot stay. The asthma cannot stay. Why? The word of God is maturing in you. Growing in you. Increasing in you. Hallelujah. 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 Are you still here? At this moment, I want you to set your heart on the Lord. Set your heart on the Lord. Something is happening. It's as though God is digging his hand right into your spirit. Yes.